and welcome to ESC Fan TV. Let's move on to Norway. So let's go to Sean. I thought the staging was similar to friend of a friend of a friend of a friend with the boxes and the colours and uh, yeah, it was okay. Distro, waltz of death. I'm a bored to death. It was bloody awful, just the best. And I don't know who's washing they were they were drying out on the on the line during the performance or speak see through knickers that they were dancing through or whatever. But <laughs> take me to heaven. I thought it was a thoroughly decent pop song. Nothing wrong with it at all. I love the, the coloured boots that the dancers were wearing. I love the outfits. That high note that it hit, superb. I'll happily dance along to that in the clubs. Half decent songs, apart from Walls of Death, which I thought was a pile of crap. Go to... Go on, Phil. Oh, OK. See, um, I knew he wasn't ready. Yeah. I don't know. Vida Villa, was that? Yeah. Uh, Mayor? It was a bit too sweet to me. It was me. nice I like and the, jolly. I like the matching suit. It was. It was nice jolly pop I've song. Got oh, very coffee. sweet. Uh, needs a bit more room for think. Would it take me to heaven? I kind of missed that one. I don't know. What do you think? Really? Yeah. Oh, my God, I loved it. I, I thought it was like as camp as Christmas, the song and the performance, and I thought it was brilliant. Mr. Waltz of Death. It was, yeah, another goth song. And, you know, the bloke playing the guitar looked really sinister. <laughs> But she looked like she was dressed to sing a completely different song. Yeah. And I don't know what's going on with the plastic sheets. It didn't have enough impact. It was no We Come Alive, was it? That was the problem. Yeah, I think if you're going to do a sort of gothy type thing, you need to go full goth. You can't just sort of go half goth. It's like she turned up and, and went, oh, shit, are we doing all the makeup today? I, I, I forgot. Mm. And then it's you're sort of stuffed, aren't you? You're neither here nor there. Thomas, Thomas you bring us back to normality. Uh, two of these three songs reminded me of someone in this group in EC Fan TV. Vida, it got me thinking of Tom. Tom would have loved this song and it reminded me of an EC classic, Justice for Lennevine's Hilda. It was just up his alley. It was just a catchy song. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I think it was good. Mistra, I didn't like that one. Uh, I think it was confusing. It, it looked very cheap with those plastic thingies. Yeah. Thomas Jensen, Take Me to Heaven. Yeah, it was a good song. Catchy uh, chorus. Good singer, good performer. Uh, he really hit that high note. That was impressive. Yeah. But uh, the best of these three for me was uh, Vida Villa. So let's go to Brendan. Brendan. Yeah, so uh, uh, Vida Villa. Um, yeah, I, I wrote Meh down as well, Sean. Um, <laughs> however, it, it did have a good beat, and it was my favourite out of these three. And I did like the drummer's moustache. If I could only get one of them, it'd be something. <laughs> uh, Walter Death. All I could think of is that where my bin bags went from the storm last week. It was just why were they there? It made no sense. Thomas Jensen. Obviously, he's stolen the outfit from Ola Maybe Baby. That song. Okay. <laughs> a good pop song, a good performance, and obviously hit the high notes. So let's go to Donna. I thought they're all pretty good in their own way. I'm gonna give Mistress some love, right? <laughs> it was just creepy enough that it was it was great. It was like she'd set up crime scene investigation with all that plastic sheeting in the background. We were gonna see who was dead any minute, and there was all this scurrying around of like um <laughs> the grey dancers in the background and I think it would work better if she did a duet with Goth Minister and left the the guy with the kiss makeup out of it because um he really shouldn't have had the kiss makeup. It that's what made it not work. Thomas Jensen, atypical dance pop song. I mean his vocal was stunning though and that high note as everyone keeps mentioning it was brilliant. So he probably stood the best chance to kind of get through to the final but it's I was surprised he didn't. Yeah, staging and outfits, though, not so great. Vida Vila was another one I really liked as well, like with Thomas. It was it was a little late Malawi, but they needed to look at the camera work a bit better. It was catchy. I liked it. Chorus was repetitive. It sank in my brain. Yeah. I like your little happy face then, Donna. That was lovely. Yeah. Oh, Aline, you finish up with this for the best of the rest. What do you think? The Vida Vila with... 
mayor. Um, I really liked it, to be honest. Um, I don't know if it was because it was in Norwegian or it just kept you watching because there was so much constantly going on. And then the Thomas Jensen from uh, But Take Me To Your he uh, to Heaven. Um, like um, Brandon said, Ola Me Baby Bay. Like I was like, they were inspired by Ola Me Baby Bay and they made a little twitch and they just rolled with it. Um, I liked it, but I thought it was not good enough. Mistra with Walls of Dead. It's like if you order Kiss from Wish and you get that. You're just waiting for something to happen during that song and nothing happens. Like, give me God Minister any moment of the day, but that, no, just no for me. Let's have a look at Brendan, I can feel the positivity oozing out of him. And Princess Save Me. It was an average performance. I, th I thought it was a bit boring. The staging was good. It's just, again, you just can't see her because it's just too dark. There's not enough lighting going on. It was a good voice. Uh, Mia Green Lights. I thought it was a very sweet song. I quite liked that. It built very well. But I feel like she could have benefited from backing dancers. Okay, no. <laughs> um, after last week with um, AI, I was a little bit worried because um, with... Damn Digida. I love the song. I find it really catchy. I know every word of it now. That performance was absolutely amazing. The vocals were perfect. It was just so enjoyable. I thought it was so clever. Just don't think they can't win it now. I believe that they are without doubt going to run away with the show. Okay, no. <laughs> I know you like at least two of these. And Princess would save me. Um, a bit on the same with Brandon. I thought it was a bit boring. Uh, a lot did not happen in the song, not in the staging, and not in the outfits for me. Um, I was, again, waiting for something to happen, and nothing happens. Mia with green lights, but I really loved it. So, to Kano, it was, for me, a bit weird, because I never thought Kano would perform the way they did. Um, I really liked it, but I'm a Kano fan, and um, if they win with this song, I will be so mad, because I'm still not over Monument. I think Monument was their best song ever, and they should have been 10. If they win, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have a problem with myself. Yeah, I liked it, and I liked the modern way and the boxes with their heads. It was new, it was refreshing, and if I think they would go to Eurovision, I think it will also be a new way for them to be on the Eurovision stage, and nobody would like compare them previous entry i don't know phil what did you think of the three qualities okay and princess save me with the whistling at the start um it was okay it was you know well sung well performed it just sounded like a million other eurovision songs one of these songs that you could hum along to even if you've never heard it before yeah i just put brilliant interpretive dancing said nobody, nobody ever. ever yes mia green lights i don't know she sang it well but it just didn't click with me, and I'm really not sure why. What do you think? Well, I just thought I thought she belted it out. I really did. She sang it brilliantly. It, I just felt like I'd heard the song before. You know, it's it's one of those every every song sort of songs that you could hum along to, even if you've never heard it before. But she sang it fantastically. Okay, no, yeah, it was okay, wasn't it? It was the best of the night by far. I liked, uh, is it Alexandra, her, her huge shoulders? But I didn't understand why the other two were in a box. What was going on with them weird dancers with the with the lips on the head? It looked like... I like them. Yeah, it looked like some sort of weird YouTube cartoon thing that went viral. It was good, you know. It was, it was the rest of the night, but it's not Spirit in the Sky, I think. That's the problem with it. You're going to get so much hate. I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, are. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready for this? It was the best of the night. No, whereas, no whereas I'm not that stupid and wrote, best vocal of the night, Alexandra, always flawless. Mm -hmm. Donna! I decided that I'd actually got a wig for Mia, so I was kind of like, I'll just channel her inner, inner spirit. Now, um, I actually quite liked Mia, honestly, but 
the one problem I had with it more than anything was that it built up so slowly at the beginning. It took about 30 seconds to really start getting going. I was starting to wonder if it was going to go anywhere at all and it might be just another ballad, but it kicked up a gear and then she did these crazy run around the stage things. And I'm like, am I going to like this or not? By the end of the song, it really worked. And I did like the laser light show that was going on on stage and things. So, And Princess was the one that I really went, huh? It qualified. Beautiful vocal, but the song was really dull for me. And it's like they just grabbed a bit of staging from the back of the corridor and went, oh, we don't know what to do with the set. Let's just put it on a jaunty angle and get somebody in some grey pyjamas and it'll all work out really well. Her chorus was very catchy. It was very repetitive and it drawed you in. So she was okay, but I wouldn't have put her through myself. Kano, I knew they'd go through. In that, in that group, definitely. Whether they'll actually win overall, I don't know. I'm in two minds about this particular song. I really think it's a lot of fun. And the way they sing it, I'm just in shock because it's so fast. <laughs> and and I can just about do diggy loo diggy lay at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I agree, Michelle. Alexander, absolutely flawless. Her vocal just gets better and better. And I, I like the way that they're starting to really sell her a lot more now and push her at the front. For me, the best of the night anyway. And Princess, let's start with her. Didn't quite get the pajamas outfit. I think the chorus was similar to Destiny, Malta 2020. There was something there that reminded me of that song. A bit shocked that she went through. I really, really like Mia with green lights. Uh, I like the soft, gentle beginning and the nice build up of the song. And she and, and her vocal is, is amazing. With Kano, I have two opinions. One opinion on the studio version that I listened to before the show. I actually didn't like it. I've, I, of course, I like Alexander's voice. Who doesn't? It's absolutely amazing. But I think, as my sister-in-law Anita in the chat wrote, it was too aqua. But the live performance really did it for me. That was absolutely perfect. That was flawless. And again, Alexander's voice, wow. Who doesn't want to sing like her? The only disappointment in the in the Kano song I have is when you if you compare to the other two they entered, then this is a bit uh, is is the weakest one of those three. Monument is by far the best for me. Spirit in the Sky is number two, and this is this is number number three. It's a good song, favorite to win in Norway and go to Malmö, but it's not the best Kano song for me. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. You're just about to get ripped to shreds by the Queen of Kano. It's Sean. I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I found that difficult to believe. So, uh, first of all, Green Lights, uh, Maya, great performance. I thought, uh, strong song, good vocal. I just felt it was missing some dancers in the second half of the song, but really strong. And Princess saved me. I loved it. Uh, I loved the staging, the dancers, the platform was used really, really well. It was a well constructed song, solid performance, entertaining. Kano, the back. Now, people saying it's no spirit in the sky. And it's not, because they've been there, they've done that, it worked. But you can't come back and do something the same all over again. Damn Digging Out is something completely different. It's fresh, it's new, and it started off with a performance, and it's just Alexandra, front and stage. I'm thinking, well, where's Fred? And where's Tom? And she sang the whole first verse and the bridge, the chorus, uh, all on her own. And then we went back and we saw Tom and Fred just jamming it up with these two weird robot and things. <laughs> bobbing up and down it was just so random but really really funny um and i really thought it was just a different way of staging a song we've seen every other kind of stage in this this last few weeks on all these national finals where they just they couldn't just go as a threesome and just stand on the stage and sing the song they had to do something different and innovative and with the lighting and the glass and in the second verse you could see the people behind it with the you know with with the the mouth mouthing away and stuff and then alexandra hits that high note and then it all opens and then they come out and then it's just i think it's just brilliant the staging's great the song's great and i think it is going to win maddy grand prix and i'll be gutted if it does because i'm not going to malmo for eurovision and i'd love to be there to support them if they if they actually represent norway so yeah i i, I think they've got an absolute amazing song kano are just I think they're just great. Fred was a rapper before um, he used to um, sing the Yikes. And it, it's just a great song. It, it's fab. Damn dig it out. It means this thing that makes you feel good. And for Alexandra, she was saying that is being on stage with Kano. 
And the good thing about Kano is that you can tell that they love each other, the chemistry that they've got together. It shines through um, to the audience that they're performing to, whether that be in a live venue or in a TV studio. And you just feel the love, as, as you know, from, from Kano coming across. And I just think there's something really nice about their relationship and the band and i think they bring something fresh and new and this is something fresh and new and they've been doing this five years this is a kind of song that they've not done before i think it's brilliant i think it's really i love it i love it i love it thank you very much sean i knew we could rely on you to end on a high note bye, bye. bye. <laughs>